Hi, you are about to go on a tour through a place called the crossroads of the world. You are about to go on a virtual tour through Times Square. Hi, I'm Catherine with Free Tours by Foot. Free Tours by Foot is a walking tour company that offers pay what you wish walking tours in cities all over the world. In addition to those tours, we also have private tours, we have audio tours, self-guided tours, and now virtual tours. So let's go ahead and get started. We're starting here on 8th Avenue. Right behind me is the Port Authority bus terminal. Even though construction started on this building in the 1940s, it's been expanded many times since then. This is the largest bus station in the Western Hemisphere. It is also the busiest bus station in the entire world if you measure in terms of volume of traffic. So this place serves about 65 million people every single year. The skyscraper behind me that you can see on the corner is at 41st Street and 8th Avenue. This is the headquarters of the New York Times. Now the New York Times was established as a newspaper in 1851, but like most newspapers in New York City, it was headquartered much further downtown, so right down by City Hall. Now the current building here on 8th Avenue is relatively new. This was designed by Renzo Piano. Construction started in 2003, but the New York Times already had a long history in this area before that building came into the picture. Uh, in the 1890s, Adolf Ox gained the controlling stake in the New York Times newspaper. He decided it was time for some changes. Uh, so in 1904, he moved the newspaper from its location down on, on Park Row right up to one Times Square, what we would call one Times Square today. That was seen as a little bit of a strange move at the time because there wasn't as much up here as there is today. It certainly wasn't considered the crossroads of the world. Uh, this area was actually not even called Times Square. It was called Long Acre Square, and it was primarily the headquarters for New York's carriage industry. The name Times Square was actually in honor of the New York Times moving up to this area. And the movement of the paper up here to Times Square to 42nd Street actually brought a lot of other businesses of, of many, many different kinds coming into the area. Now, we're walking down 42nd Street right now, and what you're seeing on 42nd Street is very quintessential Times Square. You're going to see a lot of neon, a lot of blinking lights, um, even businesses like Lids, a hat store, Dallas Barbecue, Applebee's is going to have a crazy bright blinking sign that you may not find in those same places in any other place in the world. Um, so as we're heading this way, we are heading towards what would officially be considered Times Square, but all of this would encompass the Times Square area. One of the things this area is best known for is all of the bright lights. And most of those lights in Times Square come from billboards and spectaculars. If you haven't heard the term before, spectacular is what we call a lot of the advertising space here in Times Square. That would reference anything that you see that's not just a standard billboard uh, with print and text. Um, all of these bright lights, LED screens, flashing lights, uh, a lot of the spectaculars can be interactive or they have a social media component uh, and that's very common here in Times Square. So with all of these lights going on, this place does use an enormous amount of electricity, about 161 megawatts. Uh, and just for reference, that is double the use of electricity on the entire Vegas Strip. So. This is also considered some of the most prime advertising in the United States. It does not come cheap. The most expensive space here in Times Square costs over $3 million per month. So 
Times Square is a pretty densely packed area, and what that means is you can see a lot without covering very much distance. Right behind me, this beautiful Beaux Arts style building with the red brick, the green roof, is the Knickerbocker Hotel. It was originally built by John Jacob Astor. This was a hotel until 1920, and then it was converted into office space. But they went back to their roots in 2013. It is a hotel once again, and actually home to a wonderful rooftop bar. If you are somebody looking for a rooftop bar with great views in Midtown Manhattan, definitely check out the Knickerbocker. Uh, so Times Square area is also home to ABC Studios. Those letters spinning around, that's the ABC News Zipper. Um, this is also home to the Armed Forces Recruiting Station here in Times Square. Now they have recruiting for all of the branches of the military here, um, but it's come a long way from its origins. The original recruiting station here in Times Square was a small cottage and it was built in 1946. It didn't even have a bathroom. Uh, so much more modern building here. Um, and it's not just for show, they actually get about 1,000 applications here every single year. Right over there is the home of the former Paramount Theatre, beautiful theatre built in the 1920s, modelled after the Paris Opera House. A lot of important premieres happened there at the Paramount. Unfortunately, because of decay in the area in the 1960s, the theatre was closed down, the interior was gutted uh, and turned into office space. The area where the lobby would have once been is now home to a hard rock cafe. So. All of this started, all of Times Square started when the New York Times moved to this area. And when they first came here in 1904, they moved right here at one Times Square. Um, that was their original home. The New York Times grew very quickly though, so after the move up here and the renaming of the entire square, within a decade they had already outgrown this home. They had to start building a new building over on 43rd Street. They continued to expand that and ultimately they left this building altogether. But this is the origin of all of the New York Times history here in this area. This is also the site of one of the most famous photographs ever taken in New York's history. And that was when New Yorkers were crowded into this area to hear about the Japanese surrender to the Allied forces in World War II. And right here in Times Square, a sailor kissed a nurse and created a very, very famous photograph that I'm sure you have all seen. Um, this was also the beginnings of the New Year's Eve celebrations here in Times Square that people all over the world watch every single year to ring in the new year with the ball drop. The New York Times started the New Year's Eve celebrations in honor of their move here to Times Square, and they were the ones that started the ball drop right on top of this building. So if you're enjoying the tour so far, why don't you go ahead and click that like button, help others discover this video. And if you would like to watch more walking tour videos like this one, then also consider subscribing to our channel. In addition to New York, we offer tours in Washington, New Orleans, Boston, San Francisco, London, Berlin, and many more cities. And if you have any place that you'd like to see us offer a video tour of, then leave your suggestions in the comment section below. Now back to the tour. So one of the first things people think about when they think about the Times Square area is theater. This is considered the heart of the theater district in New York City. So over here on 44th Street is the Majestic Theater, which is home to Phantom of the Opera. Phantom of the Opera has the distinction of being the longest running Broadway show in history. They opened in January of 1988, and they have run for over 13,000 performances. Just for reference, the number two slot on that long longest running list is the original Broadway production of Cats. They ran for about 7,500 performances. So Phantom has been a part of the Broadway world for a very long time. So when you hear people talk about theaters in this part of town, um, they're called Broadway theaters. That has nothing to do with Broadway the street running through this area. It's actually a size reference. Broadway theaters are theaters that have 500 seats or more. An off-Broadway theater has 100 to 499 seats, and an off-off Broadway theater is a really small theater. It'll have 100 seats or less. 
So theater wasn't always located in this area. Like many industries, it started to follow other things up here once the New York Times moved into this area. But it was an important timing shift for theater because the theaters downtown were older and they were gaslight theaters. So producers wanted to come up here and they wanted to produce in new modern theaters run on electricity. Um, and actually lighting up the marquees with electric lights was considered a really big deal. The white light bulbs, light bulbs that line the marquees led to the nickname the Great White Way for Broadway. So this little alleyway here is called Schubert Alley. The Schuberts were the most powerful Broadway producers at one point in time. They actually owned both of these theaters here, both the Schubert Theater and the Booth Theater, and the Schuberts used to come and park their limousine right here in this alley. But this was also a really important gathering spot for actors in the 1920s and 1930s. This is where actors would line up to either go in the stage door and go audition or sometimes just to meet up with other actors and, and try to get intel about who was hiring, what casting offices were having auditions that day. So right up here, this little shop, One Schubert Alley, it, it's a store, it's a souvenir shop, but it is actually located in a former dressing room of the Booth Theater right here on the corner. So this is a really important point here in, um, in the Broadway world. This is kind of the geographic center of the Broadway universe. So you will see that there are, there's a lot of scaffolding up right now on these theaters. Um, theaters are closed at the moment, and so some of these are getting some much needed renovation. Um, oftentimes, there is just enough time to load out the last show and load in the new ones. These are old buildings. A lot of these theaters are over 100 years old, so they are getting, uh, most of them, some much needed renovation work right now. So this north end of Times Square is actually called Father Duffy Square. Father Duffy was an army chaplain during World War I. This statue right here is of another man, George M. Cohen. George M. Cohen was a little bit of everything. He was a producer, he was a writer, he was a composer, he was an actor. Um, but he is considered one of the key figures in the early days of Broadway uh, and a, an integral part of forming what we would consider the modern American musical. You probably know some of his most popular songs, including You're a Grand Old Flag, Yankee Doodle Dandy, and Give My Regards to Broadway. And over here is a statue of the man himself, Father Duffy, who this whole area is named after. So we are walking up the red stairs here at the north end of Times Square. This is a very, very popular place to come and sit and just watch the world go by a little bit. This is also the best spot to come and experience what's called the midnight moments. This happens the last three minutes of every day, 11.57 until midnight. The midnight moment is an art installation that will happen in all of these billboards coordinated and timed around you. So if you find yourself in this area and it's anywhere close to midnight, make sure you hustle over here, grab a spot on the stairs and enjoy. So right underneath the famous red stairs is the TKTS discount ticket booth. So this is run through the Theater Development Fund, and this is where people can come and get day of discounted tickets. You can get a discount of up to 50% on your Broadway show tickets. Um, you can come and get matinee or evening tickets here. You line up in the morning for matinee tickets and in the afternoon for evening tickets. Um, if the wait in line here at Times Square is not for you, there are other locations of TKTS, including down at the South Street Seaport and one in downtown Brooklyn as well. And even though there are a lot of new discount ticket sites and apps, TKTS is one of the tried and true ways to get a deal on your Broadway show tickets. So on 46th Street, between 8th and 9th Avenues, this stretch is called Restaurant Row. Um, and this is access to almost any kind of food that you can think of right in the vicinity of Times Square. This is a great place to come if you're looking for something to eat either before a Broadway show or after a Broadway show. A lot of the places on this stretch will do what they call a prefix menu, where it's a fixed price for an appetizer, entree, and dessert. It can be a really good deal. Um, 
It's worth the short walk to come over here. Most of what you're going to find right in the middle of Times Square is going to be Applebee's, TGI Fridays, Irish pubs, honestly things that you could find almost anywhere in the world, probably including your hometown. So if you wanted something just a little bit different, if you want uh, any kind of food from almost anywhere in the world, you can come over here to Restaurant Rio and have a great experience before or after your show. So right behind me is the Ed Sullivan Theater. This was originally built in the 1920s. In 1935, CBS took over and this was used for radio broadcasting. In the 1950s, with the spread of television, they transformed the radio studios here into television studios. And in 1953, the biggest shift for this place came about. A man named Ed Sullivan started hosting a show from here. In 1964, this theater is where the Beatles made their American television debut. Later on, this was home to a late night show hosted by David Letterman and currently home to a show hosted by Stephen Colbert. This area, while not right in Times Square, the surrounding area does have opportunities for you to go and see a lot of late night comedy shows, not just Colbert's show. Um, so definitely check out some options for tickets to go see some of those late night comedy shows here in this Midtown area. Our next stop is completely up to you. Where do you want to go next? Will you head with me to see some more of Midtown Manhattan or maybe go with me up to Central Park? Check out some of our other virtual tour offerings. And while you're here, make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you get notifications every time we release new content. Um, we do these for free, but any tips for your tour guide are very, very much appreciated. So thank you uh, for making a small donation, buying me a cup of coffee or a glass of wine if you can. Thanks for joining us and we will see you next time.